Okay, hi everybody, it's Dr. Mexico back again. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about a topic that is very, very important. Um, I like to try to make these things pretty interactive. So I know it seems silly that I'm, that I'm trying to interact with you guys through, uh, th through uh, social media like this, but, uh, but, but trust me, I, th I think it just works, it works. So, so do me a favor, and if you're watching this video right now, do, do me a favor, if you get anything out of this video helpful, just comment in the section below, just comment where you are watching it from geographically, so city and state. So if you're in Boston, Mass, just put Boston, Mass, thanks, something like that. But today we're gonna talk about a word that likely none of you have ever heard of, and then a word that likely all of you have heard of. So by a show of hands right now, by a show of hands, and I know it sounds silly, but do, just do it for me, just you know, raise your hand. By a show of hands, I want you to tell me how many of you have heard of the word ibuprofen? Ibuprofen, right? Okay, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, okay, I see, I see. Good, a couple of hands going up. But, okay, so everybody's hands up at this point, right? If everybody watching this video has heard of ibuprofen or an NSAID. NSAID stands for a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So I still see, yes, everybody's hands up. Okay, you go ahead and put your hands down. Thank you. So you wanna know why everybody raised their hand when I mentioned ibuprofen and NSAIDs? Here's a little statistic for you. 30 million people in the United States every single day, 30 million people a day take NSAIDs. 111 million prescriptions for NSAIDs are written every single year. That right there is irrefutable evidence that we have a chronic inflammatory epidemic in this nation, a chronic inflammatory epidemic. It's not that we have a chronic shortage of ibuprofen or a chronic NSAID shortage in our body. It's that we have a chronic surplus of arachidonic acid. So another question, how many of you have heard of the word arachidonic acid? Good. Same, same thing. Just if you've heard of arachidonic acid, just put your hand up. Okay. Come on. Don't, don't be shot. All right. Yeah, all right. I see a couple of, couple of hands going up. Dr. Thaddeus Gala, you can put your hand down. I know you know what arachidonic acid is. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Josh Axe, you, you can put your hand down. I know you know what arachidonic acid is. Okay. Do me a, let me change the rules a little bit. If I went to school with you and you were fortunate enough to have Dr. David Seaman as your clinical nutrition professor, you can put your hands down. Okay, yeah, so everybody's hands just went down. So there's a couple of hands still up, but the point I'm trying to drive is almost nobody knows what the word arachidonic acid is. Even the physicians watching this video, most physicians do not know what arachidonic acid is. So with that being said, I think it's a crime, a tragedy, that everybody in the world knows what ibuprofen is, but nobody knows what arachidonic acid is. So I hope to clarify this for you right now. So in order for me to clarify this, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. I have to get scientific with you for a moment. So I wanna do something. I want, to, I want to pause for what I refer to as a moment of science. Moment of science. Here we go. And I wanna to explain to you a little bit more about that word that we've been talking about, arachidonic acid. So arachidonic acid is all we're talking about for the, for the purpose of this video and its role in inflammation and how it is the primary reason really why you know, billions of NSAIDs are consumed every single year. So let me just show you, let me break it down for you. So essentially foods that are high in omega-6 fatty acids, as you see right here, these are foods that contain either alpha linoleic acid, um, grains primarily, um, or, or foods that are coming from a grain fed animal, which contain this arachidonic acid, which we're talking about today. So arachidonic acid. Um, arachidonic acid comes from, from our food. We ultimately get it from our food. And when we consume it, the arachidonic acid goes onto our cell membrane. It helps make up something in our cells. It's called a phospholipid bilayer of our cells. It's an omega-6 fatty acid. So those those um, those omega-6 fatty acids, um, and really omega-3s as well, but fatty acids that make up the cell's membrane ultimately get cleaved off of the cell's membrane and they fall into the side of the cell. And when they get inside of the cell, 
they're acted on by certain enzymes. The enzymes that act on these, these uh, fatty acids are referred to as COX enzyme and LOX enzyme, or cyclooxygenase and lipooxygenase, as you see right there on your screen, COX and LOX. This enzyme is the reason why you are taking ibuprofen. So, so ibuprofen tries to block the COX enzyme from breaking down this omega-6 so that it doesn't cause inflammation. But really you see the problem is not so much with the COX enzyme, the problem is the arachidonic acid, so this omega-6. If this omega-6 was an omega-3, well, you, you would want it to break down the fatty acid. So while you're taking that COX enzyme, by the way, it's also not, it's not just slowing the breakdown of this omega-6, it's also slowing the breakdown of the anti-inflammatory omega-3. So let me explain a little bit further. So this omega-6 arachidonic acid falls into the cell. It's then, so it enters a cell, it's broken down by cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase and then it ultimately causes these little dots that you see there are what are referred to as its inflammatory eicosanoids, primarily prostaglandins. So that causes inflammation, pain, and the expression of inflammatory diseases. Okay? The opposite holds true when you eat foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Those cause a release of eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, EPA, DHA. It goes through the same process. These omega-3 fatty acids now go into the cell. They're acted on by the same COX and LOX enzyme, but when they are broken down, they cause an anti-inflammatory response, pain reduction, and lack of disease expression or reversal of disease. So let me blow this up for you and show you exactly how it looks. So here's a big cell. So all of the little um, all of the little blue and purples that you see here, these are omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. And when, again, when, when they, they are cleaved off of the cell's membrane, they fall into the middle of the cell, the cytoplasm, for those of you that understand biology a little bit, when they get into the cytoplasm, they're acted on by these enzymes, cyclooxygenase and lipooxygenase, COX and LOX enzymes break them down into their eicosanoids. In this case, because it was omega-6, these eicosanoids are inflammatory and they go out into your blood and they cause inflammation. Okay? So the problem is not that, th that our bodies have a lack of ibuprofen to break down these fatty acids. The problem is that our bodies have an abundance of arachidonic acid. And here's it. So, so the acute phase of healing really requires inflammation to heal. So I know there's, there, I know there, there are some of you out there, you know, getting ready to fire away on your keyboard. Your hands are just smoking. Can't wait to say, but, but doc, Dr. Mexico, inflammation is required for healing. We need inflammation. So, so therefore I have to inflame myself with, with these pro-inflammatory foods. That's not true at all. It is true that inflammation is required for, for healing, um, but inflammation for healing, the ideal ratio would be one to one. So for every omega-6, we would have an omega-3. Uh, the problem is an acceptable ratio uh, would, would even be, you know, four to one. So four omega-6s, four times the inflammatory omega-6s versus one omega-3. The, the problem is the human body, in, in most Americans, we have a ratio of, of 25 to one. So 25 times the inflammatory potential. So this is what our cells look like. If you look at a cell, all these sixes or omega sixes, every row, all these are all rows of omega six fatty acids. And you have one lonely omega three trying to fight all of those. I always like to use uh, the Game of Thrones reference when I, when I show this slide and I say like, this is like, this is like Jon Snow um, go, going to battle the Bolton army, right? Like he, he really had no chance. He had no chance. He was way, way, way outnumbered. And you're gonna say, well, well Jon Snow won. I don't wanna spoil it for anybody, but uh, but, but he, he, he only won be, be, because, the, uh, be, because the other army from the Erie came in and helped. So no chance of winning this fight unless you remove the omega-6s. You cannot keep taking ibuprofen and think you're gonna win this inflammatory battle. It'll never, never, it'll never, ever, ever work, okay? Okay, we're back. So now all of you should have a really good idea of the fact that Arachidonic acid is the bigger issue here. Nobody has an ibuprofen deficiency. 
It's not that the, your problem is not that you, you have a lack of ibuprofen in your system and that's why we have these chronic inflammatory issues and these chronic inflammatory diseases. The problem is we have a surplus of arachidonic acid because we're consuming way too many grains and way too many animals that are consuming grains and, and other foods really that contain high amounts of omega-6 fatty acids that, 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 that cause the, either the production of arachidonic acid or, or the breakdown of it. So again, the word of the day, I hope most of you watching this have learned what arachidonic acid means um, and why it's so important and, and, and why uh, in order to reduce inflammation, we cannot keep relying on popping you know, NSAIDs and ibuprofen every day, but we need to reduce the amount of arachidonic acid that we take in. So this is Dr. Mexico, hope you learned something today. Again, please do me a favor, just quickly, just put in the comment section below, just you know, say wh where you're watching this from, you know, city and state or country, if you're watching from another country, just stay where you're watching it from. Um, it really helps grow our audience and it helps me know that the, the message I'm trying to put out is, is reaching people and people are learning from this. So again, it's Dr. Mexico, make it a great day.